In the previous lesson, we learned a process known as completing the square. And we could see that when we completed the square for a quadratic equation, whether it factorized initially or didn't factorize, completing the square gave us the solutions for x for that particular equation, if those solutions were real. And we only ever complete the square when the question specifically tells us to do so. For all other times, there is actually a formula that we are going to learn called the quadratic formula that you can use to solve any quadratic equation. So we're going to start off with the general standard form of a quadratic, which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. And in standard form, all our terms of the equation are on one side. In other words, it's equal to zero. And we write them in descending powers of the variable. So x squared, x, and then the constant. Now, this proof that I'm going to show you, you don't need to learn how to do the proof. I just would like you to follow with me, see that you can understand where the formula comes from. And once we get to the final formula, that is what you need to learn and be able to use in order to solve quadratic equations. Okay, so the only way we can solve the standard form of the equation is by completing the square. And the reason for that is because I don't know what the value of A is, I don't know what the value of B is, I don't know what the value of C is, and as such, I'm unable to factorize this expression. So when I can't factorize, the alternative method is to complete the square. I'm only going to complete the square for the x squared and the x term. So to start off with, we are going to subtract C from both sides in order to um, just have the x squared and the x term on my left hand side. The next step is now to make sure that the coefficient of the squared term is positive 1. So we're going to divide by A in order to get the coefficient to be positive 1. So we need to divide through all the terms by A. So we're left with x squared plus b over ax is equal to negative c over a. We can now find the term that completes the square. We need to take the coefficient of the uh, linear term, the x, which is b over a. We need to halve it, and we need to square it. So that gives us b over 2a, all squared, which is b squared over 4a squared. So that is the term that we need to add onto both sides. Okay, we've now created a perfect square on the left, so we can factorize that into a binomial squared. The square root of b squared is b, the square root of 4a squared is 2a. So we're left with x plus b over 2a all squared on the left. On the right hand side, we can find the lowest common denominator in order to simplify the fractions. So the common denominator needs to be 4a squared in order to keep the a happy and the 4a squared. We have to multiply a by 4a, so we do the same in the numerator, that gives us negative 4ac, and here we don't have to multiply the second denominator by anything, so it stays as b squared. We can now solve for x by square rooting both sides. Remember when you square root both sides, you introduce the possibility of a positive or negative solution. So we're left with x plus b over 2a. On the left hand side, on the right hand side rather, we will have plus minus the square root. I'm going to just swap the two terms in the numerator around there, make it b squared minus 4ac. It just reads better than having the negative first. And the denominator can actually be square rooted. The square root of 4a squared is 2a. Our last job is to subtract negative b over 2a from both sides. Because they'll have the same denominator, we can write the whole fraction as um, over 2a. It will be negative b because we have to minus b over 2a from both sides. Okay, and it will be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that is the quadratic formula x is equal to negative b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what that means is that it doesn't matter what equation I've got. If it is in standard form, 
I can make a list of what are my A, B and C values equal to and I can simply substitute them in place of the A, the B and the C in my equation, in my formula and it will give me the value of X. So in the next video that you're going to watch in this topic, um, you will see an example of how to substitute in and solve for X.